Well, good morning. It's Tuesday, the 23rd of June, 2020, and this is the morning or the weekly devotion from Grace Lutheran Church in New Albany, Indiana. I'm Pastor Bruce Kishnick, Senior Pastor here at Grace. The uh, title for this morning's meditation is The Ditches of Quantica Sea. The reading is from Isaiah 35, verses 1 and 2, and 8, 9, and 10. The desert and the parched land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it will burst into bloom. It will rejoice greatly and shout for joy. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it. The splendor of Carmel and Sharon. And they will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. And a highway will be there. It will be called the way of holiness. The unclean will not journey on it. It will be for those who walk in that way. Wicked fools will not go about on it. No lion will be there, nor will any ferocious beast get up on it. They will not be found there. But only the redeemed will walk there, and the ransom of the Lord will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. I went to Michigan at the beginning of last week. My father was in the hospital with congestive heart failure. Went up there to see him. I took my daughter Krista and her two youngest kids along. Krista hadn't seen dad in some time either. Um, it was very frustrating because the hospital policy was that only one person per day could see any of the patients. So there's my 91-year-old dad struggling with breathing, and he gets one visitor per day from the family. Um, it was not adequate, but that's the fear of COVID that continues to cause difficulties in a lot of ways. Now, since we could only spend small periods of time with dad, we decided that we would take the kids to Caseville, Michigan. Caseville is a town that's on the shores of Saginaw Bay on Lake Huron. It's uh, got beautiful sandy beaches. It's an area that, that we have visited as a family many times through the years, and, and but her kids had not seen the big water before. So on the way to Caseville, we went through the little village of Quantica Sea. Now, Quantica Sea is just a small little bird, but what it is known for is that there are a number of drainage ditches that come through around Quantica Sea on their way to the bay to drain. Now you gotta understand the area that I grew up in, that area around around Saginaw and Saginaw Bay, that is that farmland is flat as a pancake for hundreds of square miles. And at one time I suppose it was lake bottom, and after the lake receded it was swamp and wetland. And when the farmers first came to farm the very rich soil there, the only way to do that was they had to drain the land. First they drained it with small ditches and later with field tiles. They ran under the ground and they ran into ditches. And the little ditches ran into bigger ditches. And the bigger ditches emptied into even bigger ditches. And the bigger ditches emptied into some of the biggest ditches you have ever seen. Now, close to Quantica Sea, there's a road that leads to Quantica Sea that for about a five-mile stretch, there are two ditches on either side of that road, and both of those ditches are immense. They're probably 12 to 15 feet deep. They're probably 10 to 12 feet across. They are deep enough that from time to time, cars have been known to, to drive off the road and into the ditch and, and not be seen for two or three days until somebody noticed the tire marks, and when they followed the tire marks down the ditch there, they saw the car people who have been hurt and even killed that, that you know, laid there for several days because it just swallowed them up. So that means that if you're going to be driving on that road, there's a premium on focus. You have to stay on the road. You have to pay attention to what you're doing because there is disaster on the right and there is absolute destruction on the left. Either way, you veer off the road, you're going to go down and Going off the road means death. In our reading for today, Isaiah describes such road. It is called the way of holiness. 
Note that no unclean people, no wicked fools, no lions or any ferocious beasts will be upon it. Only the redeemed may walk on that path. Only the ransomed of the Lord may follow its path to joy. So when Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus replied, I am the way. When he says those words, he's referring to that passage in Isaiah 35, where it says there will be a way there, a way of holiness, and only the redeemed and the ransomed may travel on it. How can any of us be redeemed? How can any of us be ransomed? It's only by faith in Christ and what he's accomplished. It's only by trusting in his righteousness, his redemption, and his promises. There's only one way, and it is a straight way and a narrow way, but it is a way that leads to salvation. And thanks be to God for that. There are people who doubt the scriptures and what they promise. Those are the people who decide they're going to pick and choose. They're going to cherry pick the passages they like and the sections of the scriptures they don't like or don't understand. Well, those things they pay no attention to. They're going to choose the pieces they want. There are other people who think that they can gain salvation by their own works of righteousness, that by a strict adherence to Old Testament rules and regulations and ceremonial law, or by a very narrow understanding of what the law says, they're going to make themselves right before God. And folks, both of those choices are like the ditches of Quantica Sea. On the one hand, there are those who set themselves up as arbiter of what's right, and on the other side are those who think that by being good, they're going to get to where they go. Both of those are paths that lead to destruction. Both of those are ditches that swallow people up. There is only one path that's safe. And it is the path that focuses and fixes its eyes and its attention on Jesus Christ and him alone. It is in Jesus alone that we have hope. He is the way, the truth, and the life. You want to avoid those huge ditches in Quantica Sea? Well, then you have to aim right down the middle on the road. You got to stay on the road. And you want to, and you want to avoid the errors that lead us away from salvation and to a reliance on ourselves. Then you have to fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. And we run straight to him all of our life long. He will lead us safely home. That's the joy we have in the gospel of Jesus Christ, that he has given himself for us and that he is the way, the truth, and the life. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have given us a path to salvation. And that is the path that stands out for us. It is our Savior, Jesus Christ, and all that he's done and all that he's accomplished for us. It's by his grace that we have salvation. And it's in that salvation that we rejoice in serving you and serving other people. Father, we pray that you'd keep us from the ditch on the left and the ditch on the right, that you'd keep us on that one straight and narrow path that leads to Jesus, and from Jesus he leads us home. Father, we pray that you'd bless and be with those people who are in need of your help. I would lift up to you my father Bob and pray that you'd continue to hold him in your hand. We pray for others, Father, that have things coming. We pray for Jim Ferber, who soon will have surgery. We pray, Father, that you'd continue to bless those that are struggling with cancer, especially be with Jennifer Paterka, be with Jan Zwald and with Ron Belden. Bless and defend each one. And, Father, we ask for your continued grace as we look forward to being your people and in celebrating Easter a couple of months late, but yet with rejoicing that our Savior Jesus Christ, having overcome death, has won for us salvation. Grant us your grace and your peace in him. Amen. Um, just a couple of things, a reminder, join us this coming Saturday for the Saturday Weekly Review. Um, Saturday services and regular communion services are going now, so everything's back on a normal schedule. And uh, remember that Both Sunday services will be recorded and broadcast on the Internet from now on. Um, A reminder also that this coming Sunday, uh, Saturday and Sunday, we'll be celebrating Easter in all three services. And and we hope many of you will decide to make that your first 
um, return to church. Others have already been there. Um, also a reminder, Thursday Saints is starting to meet now again. So every Thursday, 1030, we'll meet in the fireside room for the foreseeable future. Um, and on a personal note, put word out last week, but I'll say it again. If you've had somebody who's done a bathroom remodel and you were really pleased with the work, give me that person's name and telephone number. I'd much appreciate it. We've got one that needs doing, but I want to make sure I get somebody who's reputable and who's got a proven track record. So if you can help with that, I'd appreciate it. So God be with you, and then we'll talk to you soon again. We'll see you on Saturday. God be with you. Bye-bye.